Jennifer Dodd and I've been working with Laura Stark and Morgan Daniels on the Vernacular Archive for the Normal Volunteer Patient Program. Starting in the 1950s, the National Institutes of Health began drafting normal patients to be control subjects on their studies. These were mostly college students and our project contains 108 interviews with participants. These students acted primarily as control subjects, but they also often acted as junior researchers in the labs. As well, they engaged in a number of cultural activities inside the NIH with nurses and staff um, and outside the NIH in Washington, D.C. And we're mostly interested in the social networks built between these people. The project has two major components, building an Omeka website for the library and making a Neo4j graph gist. In designing the website, the major issue was determining how to organize our information in a meaningful way. I thought about a couple of things, organizing it by person, but with 108 people, that seemed very unwieldy to me. I thought about organizing it thematically by people who talked about gender at the NIH, by particular studies, but that seemed a little bit artificial. Ultimately, I decided to organize it by date, which allowed me to highlight the social networks. These networks were built essentially by people being at the NIH at the same time. This is the front page of the website. It contains information about the study and navigating the website. But you'll notice along the top, there is a list of cohorts by date. And this is the primary way of navigating. So I'm going to walk you through one of these cohorts to show what the website itself looks like. Each cohort has its own landing page that lists the people involved in those years from 1954 to 1956. Um, and from here, you can navigate to two different pages. The first is a page containing the interviews themselves, where the transcripts and audio will be. And the second are a series of galleries. A number of the participants in the study donated extensive materials to us, photographs from their time at the NIH. Dale Horst, for instance, wrote a diary while he was there that he gave to us. Um, news clippings and so on. And each of these items has metadata containing the date it covers, the people it covers, and any descriptions given to us by the participants themselves. There are a couple other ways of navigating the website. The first is tagging. I've tagged all of the supporting documents with things that seem thematically resonant to me. So for instance, women in science, scientific practice, leisure, nursing, so on. These things were recurrent throughout the materials and I thought would be of interest to an end user. There's also a Neo4j project that we'll have screenshots of on the Omeka page. I'll get to that in a minute. So this is what happens if you click on the scientific practice tag. You're led to another page that lists 54 items, and each of these items are photographs or documents that deal with the actual research studies themselves, rather than, for instance, touring around Washington, DC. The second major part of this project is the creation of a Neo4j graph gist. Neo4j is a tool for mapping networks of people, data, and so on. Code is used to create nodes and relationships between the nodes. Our project currently has 800 lines of code. Queries are then used to ask questions of the data and make the data display in particular ways. This is what our code looks like. At the top, you'll see the creation of nodes and at the bottom of relationships between the nodes. And this is what the graph just itself looks like. So what might immediately jump out to you is that it's very messy and hard to read and doesn't make a lot of sense at first glance. So when I first started entering information into the graph gist, it was very orderly and small and manageable. But that's the thing with Neo4j. The more information you add into it, the messier it gets. This is where queries come in. Queries are a way to make sense of this data. Our project has 19 queries currently, and they're divided into different categories, such as inside the clinical center, timelines, social networks within the NVP. I'm going to walk you through three of these queries to show you what Neo4j can do. This first query displays as a graph, and the question is, who talks about the mental health ward? So the query essentially takes the node mental health ward and determines what other nodes have relationships to it. So around the edge in pink, you'll see a list of names. And people can see those names and know if they're interested in the mental health ward, they can access those transcripts on Omeka and read about it. The second type of query lists information as a table. And the question is, what other jobs besides volunteers and researchers did participants hold? Now, if you go to the Neo4j graph just and look at it, you'll see that none of this information displays on the nodes themselves. The only way to access it is through a query. And it finds any, any node that has a property that's not researcher or volunteer and lists them here. This final type of query is a simple count displayed as a table. So it asks which universities had the most volunteers sent. 
and it simply counts the number of relationships that each university has and arranges them in a table. So to wrap up, the project for the next two weeks, I'll be continuing to upload materials to both Omeka and Neo4j as we receive consent forms from individuals, and I'll be finessing the website. So the biggest issues with this project were figuring out how to organize the data in a meaningful way, both on Omeka and Neo4j, and I ultimately decided to go with the social network approach rather than thematically or by individual. What I learned is that digital humanities projects take an extremely large amount of time and a lot of different types of knowledge. Um, and I think that the most exciting part to me was learning to write code for Neo4j, which I had never done before. Thanks.